I actually, I, I think my sunburn is going down a little bit. For all of you who noticed this last video, yes, I went to the lake. Yes, I stayed there too long. No, I did not use enough sunscreen. So I turned a little red and you know, it's going back down. I'm returning to my normal palish color. So yeah, whatever. Hashtag lobster lives matter. <laughs> Plex is awesome and everything, but if you really want to squeeze the most features out of your Plex media server, you can get a Plex Pass. Now, while there are many benefits to having a Plex Pass versus a free user account, my favorite one is getting early access to new features that Plex has not yet released to the general public. So if you're like me and you want to try out those new features, check out the description down below. Down there, you can either purchase a Plex Pass for yourself or a friend. And hey, if you don't have a free account, use my link as well. It helps me out. So check out the description down below to get your Plex Pass today. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode number 25. That's right, the episode right after number 24. Bingers. I don't have a lot to cover before I jump into the questions, except for, wow, AMD? Did you see all the new Ryzen stuff? I kinda sorta wanna get into that. So if I were to build a Ryzen build, for whatever reason, what would you guys like me to do with it? Leave your comments down below if you have some suggestions. I'm thinking it's probably gonna have something to do with Plex, at least initially. I just wanna do like a test bench thing. I got, I have plans, wheels are spinning, but I do like what they released, at least what they said they're going to release. And this weekend, I'm actually going to be working on a major overhaul slash update to Blue Iris, which is the NVR software that I use for all of my security cameras. So look out for a video for that at some point, where basically they are going to be making at least one major change that I think is going to greatly improve the overall experience with Blue Iris. It's worthy enough of me making an update video. So I can't wait to work on that. And I'll be working in my garage this weekend, trying to make tables and shelves and things like that in the garage, which really don't know how to do, but I'm gonna try it anyways. Okay, so moving on to the questions. The first question that I have of today is from Rodeo. He said, why are you using a separate SSD for your Plex data? I just keep all of my Plex stuff in the app data share, which is set to prefer my cache. My cache is two 500 gig SSDs, so even when blah, 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 blah. Okay, basically I keep everything separated. I want to say performance, but in reality, I'm never going to bog down an SSD with, you know, reading Plex stuff. It's really just, I want to have a dedicated SSD that has all of one type of data so I can back them up separately. And there's a little bit of performance slash wear and tear there as well. Basically, I don't want to run into any kind of issues where I'm file dumping onto the server. It's writing to the cache. And let's say you just happen to be writing more than your cache can handle in combination with your Plex data. Side note here, I'm talking about the Plex metadata, not like your media itself, just like all the poster arts and, you know, details about movies and stuff like that. So this metadata being held on a separate SSD is going to guarantee that all of the performance, the using, uh, the wear and tear, everything is focused directly on one SSD. You can back that SSD up independently. You can utilize your cache without having any possibility of directly affecting your Plex media server. To me, just separating those two made a lot more sense than putting everything on the one drive. Yes, you can put everything on one drive, I just personally don't like to do that. But if none of that makes sense, then it really just comes down to because I wanted to have more SSDs in my server and it was fun to plug things in. And I like SSDs because they're so cheap. So why not? Next question is from Shamu316. How come you didn't just buy the battery extender product name number? So he's asking why I added a second UPS. Uh, UPS, of course, is an uninterruptible power supply rather than adding on the additional battery that you can buy to it that hooks up to the same UPS. And the answer really is simple, and I don't know if it's for all UPSs out there, but with my UPS, it has a certain wattage capacity, and whenever it goes over 50% of what it is technically rated to provide out of the plugs, the fans kick on and it starts making a ton of noise as if the power is out and it's struggling, you know, to keep itself cool, which is the entire reason why I added a second UPS in the first place is because I was basically hitting over 50% of the available capacity wattage wise on the UPS, causing the fan to come on and be super duper annoying. If I were to add on a battery pack, sure, I would have more capacity in the sense of uptime for servers or computers, but I would lack the wattage capacity as far as being 
being able to handle more items all at the same time. Right now I have Zeus, my main server. I have my X99 D, uh, NVR system for Blue Iris. I have my main computer, which is an i9 7940X with a 2080 Ti and a 1080 Ti and like five monitors and just, I have a bunch of stuff running on the, so why not have a second UPS? I mean, seriously, at least for me anyways, it's another one of those noise primarily, but secondarily, why not? This goes back to an old video of why overbuild a server when you really don't need it that's powerful because you can. Next question is from Frosted1030. If you can already run wire, why are you using a mesh? Just WTF. I was a little confused with this question, but I wanted to point this out because this actually doesn't directly relate to the TP-Link mesh system that I reviewed. It really just relates to any access point out there, whether it's TP-Link or Netgear or whatever. If you can run a, an, an ethernet backhaul to those devices, you're gonna get better speeds to all of the other devices connected to that access point. So if I have my wireless access point over here, I'm pooping over here and I wanna watch some YouTube videos and I can't really make the connection because it's so far away, it only makes sense to have something in the middle to help boost that performance or with the mesh system to basically give me a new access point that I can connect to. And if I can do an ethernet backhaul to the middle point there, I'm ultimately gonna get better speed to watch higher quality YouTube videos while I poop, which ultimately is the goal of any mesh wireless system. Next question is from the truly insane one. Right when you said you're going to Micro Center, I knew you would be disappointed. I saw that they moved all their chairs up to the ceiling a while back. Speaking of the two stores in Georgia, pretty stupid, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm G. Woosa. <sighs> If you guys didn't see this random vlog of me driving up to Kansas City, which was about a three hour drive, I went all the way up there. I checked online, found out that they had a bunch of different chairs in stock. I've talked to other people who went to micro centers locally in their stores, and they said it was a great place to go at least try out different gaming chairs. I, I'm not totally against a gaming chair. You know, if I could try some, maybe I would like one. So I took the trip to find a, a perfect chair possibly, and they're all stapled to the ceiling. So I left empty handed and I agree that is absolutely ridiculous and I don't know why they do that They probably because of space, but I think personally I would try to find a way to have you know chairs on the ground Even I don't know, but I had a couple of people tell me about Nebraska furniture Which was like 20 minutes away from micro center, which I probably should have went to I just didn't have a plan B uh, You know, I, I should have or at least the plan B I had was not good so, you know, lessons were learned. I evolved a little bit. I won't do that again. The next question is from Remy Dilpri. As far as the Zeus upgrade, wait a little longer, except for the P2000, get that now. They will be announcing a new Threadripper, the Threadripper CPUs soon, which should hopefully drop the price of the previous generations. Yeah, that's kind of circle back to the beginning of this video. I do want to get some of the new Ryzen AMD CPUs that they were talking about. And I've actually been thinking about combining that with a P2000 and maybe running some Plex server test. Um, honestly, on paper, just hearing kind of like what Linus was talking about, you know, how AMD is claiming their new CPUs are going to perform. I, I'm really interested to see how that turns out. And if they are as amazing as they are supposed to be, and they're gonna give Intel a run for their money and possibly even outperform, you know, modern Intel CPUs, it would be kind of interesting to see what their price, po price points are going to be and, you know, how they deal with Plex. Or for that matter, Unraid. You know, you run Unraid with Plex and then you can do all kinds of stuff and get some amazing performance, hopefully. In the end, I think there's gonna be a lot of hype around the whole AMD thing, so, uh, I, I kind of want to jump into that hype, you know, try to swim around a little bit. Next question is from RS. I know you tested the Amazon Cube with Plex, but I'm curious to know your opinion since the Cube has been out a while and some of the bugs have been worked out. I personally have one and it works wonderfully for me. But again, would love to know your revisited opinion. Keep on tubing. Oh, and you rock. I don't rock, you rock. <laughs> well, I returned the Amazon Cube. I returned actually a majority of those clients that I tested because I was literally just wanting to shoot a video and I didn't wanna buy all of those clients and keep all of those clients because I had no use for most of them. But the Cube itself was very disappointing. It was a bigger device. It seemed to perform slower than its little brother all because it had Alexa and stuff you know, built into it. So 
while I don't have any plans right now for the next time I'm going to revisit, you know, Plex clients and their performance uh, with multiple different devices like that, I will definitely include the Amazon Cube when I am retesting those Plex clients. Hopefully I'll be retesting those Plex clients with a little bit more, you know, precision. I do like getting into those clients and seeing how fast they're able to load and fast forward and things like that. And maybe even by then I'll have a brand new Ryzen, you know, Plex server running with 15 P4000s or something else absolutely ridiculous that doesn't make sense. Next question from Naz. But did you get the beer glass? You need to know. The answer is yes. I got an Unraid beer glass to go with my Unraid, sh not Unraid shirt. It's hung up there. Yes, thank you Unraid again for sending me. I will link in the description down below to their merch store. I am a huge fan of Unraid. I do not make any money promoting their merch, but you know, if you're supporting a software that I use and I love and I want to continue to see grow, hey, whatever. But even though it's a beer glass, it's probably not going to have any beer in it because it's more like decoration. Just kind of like, you know, the Plex class I have up there. Just decoration. Next question is from Dial M4. He said, if playing Plex movies is slow on a device, how can I tell if the device isn't fast enough or the server isn't fast enough? Assume both are connected to gigabit networking in the same house. How can I tell which device is doing the transcoding or scaling? Well, M4, I think that if you are having performance issues and you need to trace it down, it really is kind of obvious, but you have to try a different device. For example, if my Xbox One was having issues, then I would try to load it on my computer. Now, it's highly probable that you don't have multiple different devices inside your house, but I bet you have a computer and an internet entertainment area. So if you're able to load up something like Plex Media Player on your main computer, it doesn't lag, but your uh, regular player does, then it is possible that your regular player is having issues on some level. Also something you said in here, assuming it has gigabit networking. This is something that is really easy to overlook, and it is definitely possible that you might have issues with your networking, whether it's a bad cable or something like that, maybe a bad uh, termination on your cable. Maybe try swapping out a cable. I ran into this before when I'm trying to troubleshoot connectivity issues with Plex server, and I find out I had a bad cable or maybe something on the switch and I just had to re, uh, restart the switch. So it is definitely possible. I wouldn't count it out right away, especially if you're running into a deadlock as far as performance and you can't figure out why your Plex Media server is not performing the way you want it to. In the end, me giving you exact advice on how to find any kind of problem you have from a very short question like this is gonna be extremely difficult. But I say just eliminate one thing at a time, whatever you have at your disposal to try to figure out what the problem is. Like for example, if you have another computer that you can mess around with and install a Plex Media server on just for testing purposes, maybe load on, you know, one movie file and then play that movie file with the client that you're having issues with, seeing what the performance is like with the client, you might notice that you found the problem right there. I can't tell you why your Plex server is going slow, but it could be running slow for whatever reason. Next question is from Nick O. If you're using PFSense, why are you using Pi-hole? PFSense has its own DNS blocker slash add-on that work extremely well and are very, 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 very similar to pie hole words. Well, Nick, the very simple answer here is that I made a video portraying the possibilities of a piece of software that could be used by some people. Just because I'm using PFSense doesn't mean all half a million people that watch that video are running PFSense. And I think this message can resonate through a lot of people as far as why would you do this when you have this solution? Because I can and I wanna make a video about it and it's interesting and why not? Next question is from Vanessa Stoller. Without having to rewatch all of the security camera videos again, can you recommend the best camera for the price? I need a summary to date. Well, Vanessa, honestly, I have ignored a ton of security camera requests because I seem to be getting a lot of like super cheap $20, $30 cameras that look like they just come off a stamped assembly line with a different logo on it. Nothing has caught my eye. So I haven't really tested anything new. And I also have not sent out any requests for any new cameras. So I'll have to refer back to my last top five camera video where I pretty much fanboyed over Amcrest a little bit, where their cameras were pretty affordable, they have great quality, they're very reliable working with Blue Iris, and overall, I'm highly impressed with them. I will link to that video down below and at the end of this video, so if you wanna skip through, see some of those links, see what cameras I was talking about, that's pretty much gonna be the same recommendations that I have now, just because I still use all of those cameras and I am still a huge fan of Amcrest because they have not let me down, they've been really reliable, unlike Reolink, because Reolink, for some reason, has been giving me issues. Oh, additionally, when is the when is the next live stream? 
You will need spending money for LTX. Start shots at $100. Maybe, oh God. Well, Vanessa, you know, I, I usually try to keep those streams to, a, you know, once a year type of deal. And I don't know if I'm gonna make shots $100 because although I, I would like to get some donations, so maybe I'll make the shots like $25, you know? So hopefully like maybe only like one or two people will donate and then it'll still be a good stream for me. It'll pay for the beer and the alcohol and I won't have people making me take 100 shots trying to kill me that night. Thank you, everyone, again, for trying to kill me. That was really nice of you. <clears throat> I, I almost died. Next question is not there because that is the end of the video. Well, as always, this video is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. Patreon peeps, thank you very much for being my Patreon subscriber. Of course, I'll put your names at the end of this video showcasing your support for my channel. Thank you again, you are awesome. And for like eight or nine of the questions today, I actually pulled it from last month's Jason Bites Back. So if you guys wanna ask a question and you want to have the highest chance of me seeing those questions, then post them down below on this video. I always check this video first, but I don't always make it through the comment section when I'm going into the wild comments because usually I just, I go until I find the questions I want over the last month. And once I get the questions, that's it. I, I stop looking. So this video is the best possible chance if you have a question you want to get answered to be answered. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below and have yourself a good day. So he's asking why I added a second UPS or un... un uh, so he's asking why did I add a... So he's asking why did I add an additional UPS unit or... Uh, so he's asking why... So he's asking why I didn't... So he's asking why I added another UPS or an un... un so he's asking why I added a second UPS or un, un So he's asking why I added a second UPS. A UPS, of course, is an uninterruptible power supply, rather than adding on the additional battery that you can buy to it that hooks up to the same UPS. Ah!